Good morning, men. Psalm 13, 5 and 6 says, But I have trusted in your loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. It's a privilege to share a little bit with you how the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. My name is Mike Riccardi. Um, I grew up hearing the gospel back in central New Jersey, going to church, uh, thinking that I was a Christian from even ages five, six, seven, all the way up through there. But throughout those early years, and even into my teen years, um, it was plain to me even then uh, that I hadn't submitted my life uh, to the Lordship of Christ. And so uh, when I wasn't until when I was 15 that I had an opportunity to travel with uh, some extended family to Italy. Our family is Italian-American, and every once in a while they, my family would go back to, to Italy, and I always wanted to go, and they finally took me one time. And I just had the time of my life, just being confronted with um, just new friends, exciting things to see, uh, a kind of a kind of God's creation that I hadn't been used to seeing in central New Jersey down there in southern Italy, um, and overwhelmed with those blessings, with the good things that had been mine throughout my life, even as a young man, um, God confronted me with the reality that my life didn't match those blessings. I knew they were from him. I knew that, I mean, I professed to be a Christian. I knew the gospel. I knew that he was the giver of all good things, and yet my life did not match the blessings that I had received. It was, as Romans 2, 4 says, God's kindness that led me to repentance. So after coming home from Italy back in New Jersey, I started reading the, the Bible for, for the first time. I started getting plugged into my local church and just reading through the New Testament and just being blown away by this Jesus that I'd always claimed to know and always heard about. Um, the, the officers of the Pharisees' testimony became my testimony. Never did a man speak like this man speaks. And I'd never been so, felt so found out before by a book or by anything. I mean, this book knew me. It exposed my sin. And so as I kept reading, I was learning through, through reading the New Testament and through discipleship from my youth leader at the church, what it meant to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus in the various spheres of my life, as a brother, as a son, as a friend, as a student. And learning those lessons, um, and being excited about what I was reading in the scriptures gave me opportunities way too soon to teach the word. I guess people thought, hey, he looks excited, let him teach something. And um, that was a bad idea in, in some ways and a really good idea in others, you know, just really falling on your face, having faithful guys, praise God, to come and say, listen, don't say that again. Um, <laughs> and, and and other times, say that was really helpful, you know, it was beneficial. Um, men. Uh, who were my elders, who were discipling me, uh, was just a, an invaluable experience. And through those times, as I kept growing, and uh, both in, in the faith and just as a, as a young man, opportunities kept coming, and, and there was just no greater joy for me than to seek God's face and study, no greater thrill than to proclaim that truth to his people and benefit them, see them grow. And so that study and preparation also led me to the ministry of John MacArthur through Grace to You, and I've just blown away at, wow, this is how the Bible is supposed to be taught. Um, and so continuing to study there, and as I went through college, my interest in education, which is what I had been studying, um, began to wane, and my desire to proclaim became compelling, it became constraining, and even overwhelming. And so I talked to my elders about potentially going to seminary, and after meeting with them over a period of time, they all said, you should go. And uh, after my, my wife and I finished college, we got married, worked for a year back home in New Jersey, and then drove our 92 Camry across the country uh, to Southern California back in August 2009. And the display of God's kindness that brought me to salvation, to repentance, initially, has continued to characterize uh, his dealings with me throughout my time at seminary. Um, this is place has just been such a blessing. What a joy to study at a seminary that exalts the Word of God, where you don't have to defend your faith in class, but you can bask in the goodness and the glories of the truth, to see the Word honored in the lives of the men, uh, both the students and the faculty, at every turn. It's exalted. It's not trivialized. It's not debased. And we're taught to handle that Word with diligence and with excellence and the reverence that it deserves in a way that is, is honoring to God. It's also just such a blessing. We thank God for the godly example of the of the pastors and the professors here, men who who unite biblical knowledge and depth of insight to a, a love for Christ, a sincere love for the Word, to see their humility 
and their patience in dealing with boneheaded seminary students like us, um, headstrong men, prideful men, they, they just the patience and their humility is amazing. One thing that I appreciated was observing the way these men uh, just interacted with their wives. What a wonderful education in itself to see what it means to be a godly husband. Um, it was just a blessing to learn to be men of God by imitating the example lived right out in front of us. Treasured friendships, uh, it's another great blessing. Men whom I love and uh, hope to be in, uh, sharing the, the joys and trials of ministry with for years to come. The way we enjoy Christ in each other because of his work so evident in all of your lives, of, of our, in our lives. And opportunities to serve Christ's church. One of the best parts about uh, seminary, this seminary, is to be the, on the local church campus, on Grace Church campus, and that's been a wonderful blessing for me. Is uh, It's just been invaluable to serve in Bible studies, to get to know people, um, to realize that people are people. They're human beings, flesh and blood. They're not robots. They're not machines. And we can't just, they don't come with instruction manuals. And uh, what a blessing those Bible studies have been to just soften me, teach me how to be a gentle shepherd and not a German shepherd, as Dr. Farnell would say. Um, <laughs> And perhaps the greatest blessing has been um, my wife, Jana. Just amazing to see this seminary and this church uh, help her grow in grace. Um, seminary has truly pushed us closer together. It's caused us to lean on each other when there were few others around. And she is my hero. And so I thank God for her. Future plans. Uh, by God's grace, I've had the privilege of coming on staff here at Grace Church. Um, I plan to continue in that role uh, for the near future as the Lord wills. I'm also currently enrolled in the Theology THM program, so you can pray for me about that. And uh, long term, I would love to find my way back to New Jersey and to provide a faithful expository ministry in, in an area that desperately needs it there, um, but certainly open to where the, the Lord leads. Well, praise God for his kindness to us, and may he get what he is worthy of in us. Amen.